Here we go. All right, so now let's talk about these false prophets. I'm going to talk about the largest churches in the world as well as in America. Oh. I'm going to talk about the largest churches in the world as well as in America. But let's start off with America, the largest churches in America. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that within these last days, we are not to be uh, ignorant of what Satan's doing in our world, and we don't fall prey into his evil system. So we're going to talk about the top largest churches in America and in the world. You ready for this? And then when I mention these preachers, a lot of people are going to misunderstand me and say, oh, so you're saying that having a huge church is a sin. No, it's not. But the thing is this. How did they become a huge church is a sin. That's the thing. If it's done through the word of God the right way, then praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with having a huge church. There's nothing wrong with being rich either. Okay? There's nothing wrong with being rich either. The Bible says God has used rich men for his glory. But it is how they became rich that is the issue. So if they used their, uh, if they became rich through godly means, there's nothing wrong with that. But if they became rich and how they handled and used their riches was used in a wrong way, especially you're from wrong doctrine, that is wrong, that is a sin, and sorry, but I'm not sorry for exposing Amen. it. Amen. All right, so let's cover the top 10 largest churches in America. That way you would know who these churches are. All right, but here's what I believe. I believe that this is totally out of date. So if you people, what I want you people to do is just look at it online yourselves. This is good for you because before you get mad at me, you can research yourselves. And I'll admit that with these 10, I believe it's totally out of date now. So it's good that you research yourself and that you can see, wow, I didn't know this other pastor is actually part of this, which is a problem. Not only that, these pastors, they probably became even bigger now. Number 10, T.D. Jakes, The Potter's House. So this is found at Forbes article. Average weekly attendance is 17,000 people. And that's only number 10. The Potter's House has had an explosion of growth. Pastor Jake started with 50 families in 1996. The non-denominational church's prison satellite network broadcasting is fed to some 260 correction centers in the country, according to the church website. All right, let's cover number nine. Number nine. Calvary Chapel at Fort Lauderdale. Okay, there are, Calvary Chapel is a huge chain, but the one that we're going to aim for is actually the one in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The average weekly attendance is 17,000 people as well. Calvary Chapel in Fort Lauderdale. Annual contributions is $40.3 million in tithes and offering. It says right here, the South Florida Mecca, it calls it, brings in an additional $19.8 million a year in revenue from the likes of a bookstore, cafe, thrift store, and publication sales, tuition fees from a school, and grants. All right, let's cover number eight. Number eight, Saddleback. Saddleback Community Church. Saddleback by Rick Warren. Rick Warren. Average weekly attendance is 19,400. 19,400 in attendance. Just gets bigger and bigger, folks. Annual budget, $36 million. Formed in 1980, Saddleback carries the model, one family, many locations. Pastor Warren gave the inaugural uh, invocation for President Obama. He authored The Purpose Driven Life, a book that has sold more than 30 million copies. Warren and his wife practice reverse tithing. Okay, let's also look right here at verse uh, number 7. Number seven. Number seven. Fellowship Church. Fellowship Church. They're located in Grapevine, Texas. Now, this is very interesting. 
Most of these churches, most of these churches are going to be located at Texas. That's very interesting. You're going to find out. Average weekly attendance, 20,000 people. 20,000. Annual budget, $51 million. Headed by Young, Pastor Young. Pastor Young is gaining on his father's number two rank at Second Baptist in Houston. Young, who's 48 years old, set out on his own in 1990, preaching to 30 families in a rented office complex. We want those who are not believers to be comfortable, he says. Uh, the church has five campuses in the Dallas area and one in Miami that it merged with in 2006. Uh, let's see. I am fearful that too many churches are just shuffling sheep, uh, people from other churches, he says. Okay, let's look at number six right here. West Angeles Church of God in Christ. West Angeles Church of God in Christ. This is located in Hollywood. Um, not Hollywood. This is located in Los Angeles. You know who attends this church? Denzel Washington. Other celebrities. Magic Johnson. Stevie Wonder. Angela Bassett. Uh, Pastor Blake took over this Pentecostal church in 1969 with 50 members. They have 80 ministries today. Urging neighborhood revitalization following the Rodney King riots in 1992, he founded the West Angeles Community Development Corporation. In 2001, he founded Save Africa's Children, an organization that provides direct care. Blake is the bishop of the International Church of God in Christ. Number five. Now, sure. this is hilarious. Number is there a five. church attendance for that one, Pastor? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Church attendance, 20,000. Thanks. Average weekly attendance is 20,000. That's a lot of people. Number five. I think we should change the name of our church to this. This is so awesome. Lifechurch.tv. <laughs> Lifechurch.tv. I mean, since we're on YouTube, we might as well call ourselves YouTube Baptist Church. <laughs> no, that ain't going to happen for a million years. I ain't going to do that. This is located in Edmond, Oklahoma. The pastor's name is Craig Groschel. I think I pronounced his last name wrong. But anyway, his average weekly attendance is 21,000. Average weekly attendance is 21,000. Annual budget, $32 million. 13 campuses spread. He also has uh, thousands of uh, supplementary materials to thousands of startup churches. Online pastor for services held at livechurch.tv. 3,000 people from 140 countries tune in throughout the week. Number four, number four, if the volume is having a hard time, just raise it, raise the volume. Uh, it's maxed. Okay. Willow Creek Community Church. Willow Creek Community Church. I actually wrote a letter to them and they actually wrote me back. I was surprised. All right. Willow Creek Community Church. Pastor's name is Bill Hybels. He's the one that's... The really early guy, before Warren and all the other guys. So this guy is one of the startup mega churches, actually, pastored by Bill Heibels. So I guess because we don't have room, we'll do the world later. Okay, the world can wait. <laughs> the world can wait. Pastored by Bill Heibels. Average weekly attendance is twenty-two thousand five hundred. Weekly budget. Uh, annual budget, excuse me. Yeah, there was budget. Annual budget, $36.2 million. All right. Some things about him started in the Chicago area in 1975. Opened four more campuses at 2002. He says this, don't let our size overwhelm you. That's what the church says. All right. Number three. Number three. Here we go. Okay, so in America... But trust me, friends, the world is even bigger than that. You're going to be shocked concerning the world. Okay, number three, North Point Community Church. North Point Community Church. Oh, uh, whatever. All right, the pastor of this church is Andy Stanley. Andy Stanley. Average weekly attendance, 
23,000. 23,000. Annual budget, $38.5 million. It's a non-denominational church for, known as Church for the Unchurched. He, uh, there are three campuses in the Atlanta area. He's located at Atlanta. All right, number two. Guess where it's at? Texas. Second Baptist Church. It's called Second Baptist Church. Appropriate for number two. Yeah. <laughs> Second Baptist Church of Houston. And it's located at Houston, Texas. Now think about it. Who else is located uh, close to Houston areas, huh? The, these big pastors. Man, Texas has them. All right, pastor's name is Edwin Young. Edwin Young. Average weekly attendance, 24000 Annual budget, $53 million. He, 70, he was 73 years old that time. Started the congregation 30 years ago with 300 people. Now, this is how they grow. They focus on the youth. Uh, they baptized 668 teen teenagers at a recent beach retreat. It's a good thing they didn't do 668, just two less and could have been really bad probably. <laughs> Only churches reaching kids are really growing, he says. All the rest of it is really fluff. So they're aiming toward the youth. Aiming toward the youth. All right. You, you thought Rick Warren was going to be like top three. No, these guys. You didn't know them. But number one, you're probably not surprised who number one is. Who is number one, you think? Yes. All right. Lakewood Church. Lakewood Church. Joel Osteen. He takes number one. Yep. No surprise there. Average attendance, he doubles almost this. 43,000. 500 members. He almost doubles the Second Baptist Church of Houston. That's crazy. A annual budget, $70 million. Joel Osteen reaches some 7 million television viewers in the U.S. Just the U.S. Uh, his message is broadcast to more than 100 countries. More than 100 countries. He has made millions from his inspirational books. All right, let's cover the world. The world is such a big place. Top 10 largest churches. Ready? Number 10. So here we go. The top 10 largest churches. We're going to start off with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so right here. We're going to start with 70,000 people. That's number 10, believe it or not. Wow, 70,000 people for membership. This is, uh, let's see right here, Vision de Futuro Santa Fe, Argentina. Vision de Futuro Santa Fe, Argentina. 70,000. So this is Vision. Uh, let's see right here, de Futuro. All right. That's number 10. All right, let's go to number 9. Number 9 is Qumran Methodist. Qumran Methodist Church. Their average attendance is 80,000. 80,000. Get out of the way, America. Yeah. <laughs> this, you see why I have to kick false prophets? This is how many people, man, are deceived. You gotta understand that. People don't understand that. Qumran Methodist Church. This is located at Seoul, Korea. Seoul, Korea. The other one is 105,000 members. 105,000 members. The name of this church is AOG Grace and Truth. AOG Grace and Truth. This is also located in Seoul, Korea. This is also located in Seoul, Korea. All right, let's go to let's go to number seven. Number seven. Nambu Full Gospel. Nambu Full Gospel. 
Seoul, Korea, 110,000. Nambu, full gospel. 110,000. Number six, Elim Church. Number six, the Elim Church. The average attendance of the Elim Church, this is located in San Salvador. San Salvador, El Salvador, 117,000. 117,000. All right, let's go to number five. Number five. Uh, let me know if I'm out of bounds. Uh, Sister Danielle, let me know if I'm out of bounds. All right, I'm going to write number five here. It's Deeper Life Bible Church. Deeper Life Bible Church. By the way, you're not going to be surprised where the location is. It's where I exposed all these millionaire preachers. Africa, Nigeria. Uh-huh, Nigeria. Deeper, deeper Life Bible Church. Nigeria. It's really sad. It's really sad, folks. Deeper Life uh, Bible Church. So this church is going to be, the average attendance is 120,000. 120,000. All right, let's go to number four. Number four. Okie dokie. Number four. Utah Beachy Methodist. Utah Beachy Methodist. It's not located in Korea. <laughs> oh. It is located in Chile. Oh. It is located in Chile. I do pray that our missionary over there has delivered a lot of souls from this church. Yeah. 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 150,000. Wow. Number three. Cool. Work. Uh, excuse me. Oh, I. I uh, sorry. Sorry. Let's switch this. Not that they would make a big deal out of it. Oh. One devil is bigger than the other, so I just gave them a promotion. Okay, so <laughs> Mission Charismatica Internacional. Oh. A majority, did you notice the majorities? What what denomination, what group you notice is it? Charismatics. That's why I kick, do you see why I teach uh, really hard against charismatic doctrine? Yeah. You've got to understand that, folks. You've got to understand that. That is widespread. This is very widespread and it should be very disturbing to you. It is located in Colombia. It is 150,000. All right, number two, who gets second place? Works and Mission Baptist Church. That's a shame. Wow. That is a shame. That is a shame. Didn't you know that the Clintons, what denomination that they claim to be? Yes. Yeah, Baptist. This is a shame. Worst Baptist. Yeah, worst, yeah, worst Baptist. Worst Baptist, yeah. Okay, works and mission, Baptist. All right, this is located in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. It's located in Abidjan at the Ivory Coast. 150,000. Some of you can guess who number one is because I told you before. Who's number one? Yoido Full Gospel Church. The pastor's name is Yonggi Cho. Yonggi Cho. Yoido Full Gospel Church. They're charismatic. He, uh, Seoul, Korea. You know what he boasts? Almost double that size. 253,000. But actually, if you were to look up, you know what he claims? He claims the average attendance, actual attendance is 700,000, he claims, according to some sources. And then if you count his satellite ministries, you know what it counts to? It doubles down to 1 million. Wow. That's like a whole nation. That's why um, some of you have heard my father preach, right? Yeah. The, so what is in Korean news companies, they don't mind him calling the Pope the devil, but when you kick this guy, what do the news companies do? See how powerful he is? He's very powerful. You gotta understand this. You probably don't understand this, but I wrote a doctorate paper on this. He changed Korea. 
That's how powerful he is. He changed Korean history. That's how extremely powerful he is, but I'm not going to get there. Okay, why, are, why am I exposing these pastors? Okay, so I guarantee you these, okay? I guarantee you this. Based on these two churches, I mean, not two churches, based on these two verses, you're going to find all of the churches I pointed out there are going to be wrong, all right? If, don't get mad at me. Go to those pastors and ask them. All right. Sure. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 4, yeah. verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. See that? In the last days when Christ is coming, he's predicting something here that what preachers are not going to do. So he tells the preachers what they're going to do. Because he's going to judge them at verse 1. Judgment day is coming for these guys. Let's Amen. see if they survive the judgment. Oh, you're being judgmental on them. No, the Bible judges them because let's... Hey, before you get mad at me, do this first. Please do this first, okay, based on these two verses. Come on. It says right here, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. What does it say? Reprove, rebuke. How many sermons have you heard where it really rebuked them, kicked their sin? Talked about hell. Think about that. That's one. Second thing, exhort with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. doctrine. Amen. All doctrine. Amen. Do they teach all the right doctrines? The easiest thing where you can do the check mark quickly is talk about dispensationalism. Talk about dispensationalism and you'll check mark really quickly that they teach wrong doctrine. All right, another thing right here. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure what? Sound, sound doctrine. Yeah. That's why they grow big, because they're not, they can't endure sound doctrine. Let's keep reading. But after their own what? Think about that. Why do they, why do they go to these churches, huh? It, it's not sound doctrine, something that pleases their lust of their yeah. flesh. Shall they heap them to themselves teachers having what? Itching ears. It pleases their ears inspirational oh there's nothing wrong with what they teach and preach that's not the issue the issue is is that what they're teaching and preaching pleases the ears that's the issue it pleases how they feel in their flesh and they don't teach all sound doctrine right. see they pick and choose what's a right doctrine that fits your preference that's how they grow big all right look at acts chapter 20 so that's closer right here I'm very surprised how much time I spent on this teaching. I didn't think I'd take this long. Okay, let's look at Acts chapter 20, verse 26. Why am I condemning these preachers, huh? Because I want to be the biggest... <laughs> hey, man, you come to our church, all right? See if I want something big. Okay? <laughs> See if I'm looking for that. Verse 26. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I, Paul the pastor, am what? Pure from the what? Blood. blood of all men. They got blood on their hands. You might say, why? Because they teach heresy something wrong? That's not the issue right here. But I bet you I can find heresy and wrong doctrine. But let's skip that. The issue is this. They didn't teach all right doctrine. You know why God counts blood on your hand? You hid some right doctrine to feed the sheep. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching us online if you were hungry if your pastor, your church was feeding you rightly, think about that. And I'm going to kick some independent fundamental Baptist churches right here. That's why you guys want to grow big. That's why you, want to, you don't want to get into deep doctrine here. Why? So you can keep growing big. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at verse 28. Uh, 27. For I have not, what? Shun to declare unto you, what? All, All the counsel of God. I have not shunned, declared unto you all the counsel of God. Why are you teaching that again, Pastor? Oh, you should teach on a different subject. Don't teach him that. I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Amen. I'll teach the wackiest, deepest stuff. I'll even kick the people who are into conspiracies, who are into wacky, deep stuff. I'll kick charismatic doctrine. Yeah. I'll do that even if I lose popularity. I'll kick every religion out there. And yes, I even kick independent, fundamental Baptist churches where I came from. They're my home. I thank God for them. But there are pastors who have shunned all the counsel of God. 